So welcome Luca and Trevin. Um, we are here to talk about why Utah's high-tech economy needs more electrical engineers. I have some people here also assisting me, Jonathan Snyder, who retired from GE and Merrick Goodrich and, um, and Joseph Leibman, who are some of our senior students. And so I want to talk about this in a little bit. Um, kind of why Salt Lake City and Utah uh, Forbes just announced um, a last, in 2019 that uh, Salt Lake City was number four. They ranked it number four as the best city for tech jobs. Part of that article also said that top Silicon Valley companies such as Adobe, Electronic Arts, and Twitter have just flocked to Utah. We are definitely a hub for this tech job. Uh, there is such a need for electrical and computer engineers, that's the ECE, um, that Hill Air Force Base representatives said we would hire ever, every graduating ECE senior from the University of Utah if they just applied. And this sentiment is very is heard in different ways from a lot of different companies. As you can see here, um, many of these companies are well known and they are all kind of saying the same thing. There's a big need for electrical engineers. So just very briefly, you know, what is electrical engineering? Electrical engineers can do so much. So it's hard to narrow down exactly what does electrical engineer do because they can do a ton of different things. Um, we use applied math and also areas of physics, material science and computer science to be able to create and innovate um, things that are gonna make the world a better place. From things from smart grids to medical tools to new sensors. More specifically, we have a lot of um, applications in this area. So one area that you see on this list is microwaves and optics. And people a lot of times say, you know, microwaves and optics, you know, I, I know what a microwave is. It's the microwave that's in my kitchen. And that's not the type of microwaves we talk about in when we talk about that within electrical engineering. What we talk about that is a way of sending and receiving information. Uh, one, one type application that is relevant to that, that is being researched in our department is uh, tattooed antennas that um, they put in the body and that can eliminate the need for that external battery pack on medical devices. And it can also help uh, diagnose disease. There's also very efficient solar panels, smart grids, and we are one of two testing locations in the nation for 5G and next generation of cell phones. Uh, there's also implantable devices. You can see um, the gentleman with the brain there, that little device where he's pointing is actually a, a neural chip where it interfaces in the brain. And they're looking at trying to use that to also let the blind see again. One of the newer um, things that's being investigated is a reusable COVID test system that just plugs into any smartphone. So Utah jobs um, in particular are very, you have usually a very secure job and higher pay. As you can see here, these highlighted numbers show a lot of the numbers um, for our starting salaries and then in mid-career timeframes. And you can see they're usually higher than a lot of other um, different engineering fields. And so you can be rest assured that you're going to have a secure job and higher pay once you are done. Experiences that employers want is something else that, that we have that are very unique opportunities specific to the University of Utah. We allow our undergraduates to um, participate in research, and this is also a very unique thing. Um, we also have an entrepreneurship uh, certificate, and we do promote that um, entrepreneurship attitude and culture within our, our degrees, which is a great thing that when you go and get a job, that is something that they also look for. Uh, we have a very close ties to a lot of um, industry. So our students do internship and have work opportunities with a lot of them. In particular, we have the ones that are listed here that hire a lot of our students through this internship. We have also some other unique experiences, which are are amazing. Um, we have a world-class world um, nanofab and our students do get an opportunity to actually get certified and work in there if they have that interest. Um, we also have travel opportunities. Um, one such opportunity uh, was Antarctica. One of our uh, professors, Dr. First, took a group um, and did a study up in Antarctica on sea ice and the melting of sea ice. 
Another opportunity is that we just opened up a new um, a degree is being, our degrees both in electrical and computer engineering are being offered in our South Korea campus. And so this opens up an opportunity for our students to be able to go over there, study the same classes. They're the exact same content. Um, as undergraduates, they are also able to provide TA um, assistance ship to classes they've already taken to the other students. And then they're paid enough that usually it's enough to um, get their housing over there and pay um, for their travel over there. And so if, if students get scholarships to our department and to the U, you can use those same scholarships to pay for the tuition over there also. So it's the same exact cost for tuition. And then you have that opportunity to go to South Korea and get that experience, which is great. Um, so I am gonna be posting in this window, there is some other um, sessions that are going on if you guys need their Zoom links, which are also related to electrical engineering. Um, so please feel free to enjoy those. And type in this chat window if you have any qu specific questions that you want. Um, I have two students with me today, Joseph and Merrick, and they are going to be looking at those and then they'll post those in a second. Um, and then I'd like to introduce, um, I have Jonathan Snyder. And Jonathan is um, retired from GE, so I'll let him, I'll kind of turn it over to him for a second. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm uh, John Snyder. I was working at GE for uh, 29 years in sort of two groups uh, in ultrasound. I started in ultrasound. This is all medical imaging, by the way. This is uh, GE Healthcare. There are many divisions of GE, and they are located also in, uh, in Utah, a lot of service businesses, some finance businesses. The one I was particularly interested in was uh, one called OEC, which stands for Orthopedic Equipment Company. And it was purchased by GE Healthcare in uh, around, around 2000. So that's when I joined here, here in Utah. Um, it's located out by the airport and has uh, overall about, I think it's about 1500 employees all over the world. There are about four or 500 employees here in the Salt Lake Valley. But they are, they are the world leaders in imaging for surgery. And you can say, well, why is that interesting from an electrical engineering viewpoint? It's because almost all of the machine is an electrical engineering device. So we have, we have electrical engineers who are designing the electronics itself. That is, that is the circuit boards which run and operate the machine. Um, there are the electronic engineers that develop the x-ray generators, which, which power um, x-ray tubes. So again, another, another type of technology. But then perhaps most interesting is the image processing, which goes on after the image is received by either the image intensifier, which is when I started, or lately it's been a, basically it's a camera a, a camera that's put behind a scintillator screen. And that raw data goes into the, into the computer and is processed. But the algorithms that are used to make that image are all done by the electrical engineers. So it's often PhD based, but uh, it's undergraduates, master students who create those algorithms and then convert them into either hardware or software, it depends. In the, when I started, it was all hardware based. So you made FPGEs and you had FPGAs and you had circuit boards, which did all this processing. And of course it was an art form to convert this you know, highly complex algorithm into integer math, which could be programmed onto chips on circuit boards. And that's no longer the case. Now it's done in, in, um, in software, but you still have processors as you saw in Angela's slide, you have processors that have to take care of this, all of this kind of stuff. And that's, I spent about uh, 19 years working in that industry, in surgery, in x-ray for GE Healthcare, uh, a little bit in interventional, which is the idea of uh, dealing with catheters, which are placed into the arteries and veins in the body. You perform operations with that. And in mammography for breast cancer imaging. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of medical imaging takes place in, in this valley. And the U is a place where the development of the, the tools and the techniques that you need to work in those industries takes place. 
Um, so I'm I'm an example. I haven't been a U student because I was actually I went to a different school long ago, but have been here and working with the U over over the past five ten years, and I think it's a, a terrific opportunity to be able to get into a variety of businesses. Mine particularly is medical imaging. So if you have any questions about medical imaging, about how it works or what we do, I'm happy to happy to answer them for you. All right, thank you. Um, Merrick uh, is our senior student. Merrick, do you wanna just describe your experience? Yeah, um, let's see. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Beautiful. Okay, so yeah, my name is Merrick Goodrich. As Angela just said, I'm, I am a senior here at the University of Utah. So for those of you guys who are seniors in high school, I'm just a few years ahead of you. Um, I, I'm really excited about this topic. It's very, uh, it's, it's been a very important topic for me. Um, so I just wanted to share with you my internship experience that I've had the past nine months and how the university has prepared me for that internship experience. So as, as you guys probably know, the University of Utah Medical School is really uh, a leader in the United States. It's number 14 in primary care and number 15 in research. And that ranking is important for medical students, but it's also important, um, as John has just described, for, for engineers, um, because a lot of companies choose to locate here in Salt Lake to have, re to have access to, to the resources of the university. One company is Envue Medical. Envue Medical is a, a small startup company. The, the founders actually branched off of GE Healthcare, um, and it's the company that I've been interning at for the past nine months. Um, Envue is, a, is an imaging system, um, and here I have a picture of a computerized tomography scan or a CT scan. Some of you maybe have, have um, have used one of these or have been imaged by one of these um, or otherwise are familiar. Um, but basically the idea is that um, there's a motor in this, in this O-arm here and the, the X-ray tube and the camera rotate and take images at a lot of different angles. And then a computer puts those images together into a 3D volume. The device that Enview Medical is working on and the device that I've been working on for the past nine months is called the S1 system. And, and uh, it's similar in, in that idea. The patient would go in between this plate here and this uh, disc. And inside this disc, there's a rotating X-ray source that takes images at various angles. And then we're able to reconstruct a 3D volume. So here you can see, this is, this is a human spine that we've imaged. And this is, this. This uh, screen here shows the view from the front of your belly button to like the to your back. And then this view shows from your right hand to your left hand. And then this view shows from slices from your head to your feet. So you can see kind of the three different angles um, of your spine here. Um, and this is all so stuff that I've been that I've been working on this system. Um, so in the past nine months, a couple of things that I've accomplished. Um, I've integrated a fast camera that doubles our imaging speed. I've designed and implemented an image compression algorithm, and I've improved system reliability and safety. Um, so I've worked on quite a quite a big variety of projects um, being involved in in this company. And you have to remember that I'm still a student and and that the work that I'm doing is valuable. And so this has been a really, really cool experience for me. Um, and what I've liked working on this team, it's a diverse team. Uh, there are a lot of different pieces that go into making a medical device like this. We need mechanical engineers, uh, manufacturing teams. We need software engineers. And so I, I've really enjoyed interacting with people like that. Um, I've really enjoyed seeing my work go right into the product. Um, as a startup company, you know, we're, we're, time is everything. And so my work is important and it needs to go in. Um, so I'm not just given fake tasks, and I've really loved that. Um, I've learned more at my job than I have at any single class, and I'm getting paid a lot better than um, you know minimum wage jobs that you'd that you'd get um, if you if you didn't have the experience that I had. Um, yeah, so feel free to ask me questions. Um, again, like 
I, I'm really grateful that I've had this opportunity to work as a student. I've learned a lot and, uh, and I, I've been doing the work that career engineers do. So it's been really cool. Thank you. Thanks, Merrick. Um, so we also have Joseph, um, who's also a senior student. Joseph, do you wanna share your experiences? Sure, yeah, I guess, I mean, I always like to describe my experience in the electrical engineering program, like with reference to why I came into the program, why I almost left the program and why I came back to the program. And I mean, Angela knows this, the first reason I came into the program was a suggestion from a family member who recognized that I really enjoyed math and said, if you like to do math, you know, you'd have a great time in electrical engineering. So I actually went into electrical engineering and during the like first course that we had, which was a freshman seminar course, I recognized that like many of the students in there had been building circuits and uh, building computers their whole lives. And like, I felt super out of place and thought like, you know, I have no reference here, but I, know that I do like have an interest in airplanes and cars. And so I actually switched to mechanical engineering and was in that for one year. And that kind of got turned again when I took physics two, we take physics one, which is um, like mechanics and kinematics, like balls rolling on ramps and things spinning and turning. <laughs> And physics too is more electricity and magnetism. And taking that class, you just kind of feel like the whole world around you is just like opened up and you sort of start to understand how your phone can wirelessly communicate with someone on the other side of the globe or how your light switch can turn the lights on your room instantly, just very subtle things like that. And so that motivated me actually back into electrical engineering and I'm glad that I stayed went back to electrical engineering because now looking back as a senior I would probably say that uh, the, the knowledge that you gain as a, an electrical engineering student is actually uh, in my from my view one of the more um, broad far-reaching uh, of any of the other uh, engineering areas and I say that just because of my experience taking like physics classes so I'm a physics minor and I take some high level uh, physics classes and like even in there the any of the students who are from electrical engineering oftentimes blow the other students out of the water because they're just so familiar with the math and all the transforms and whatnot so I mean I think if you're on the edge of any sort of field of work that's remotely related to electrical engineering. I would say that it's your safest bet, the most interesting, um, your most interesting bet. And yeah, our program here at the university has given me a lot of opportunities to explore that. Oh, Angela, you're muted. Yes, you're on mute. Thanks. Um, so thank you, Joseph. Um, I'm going to show a video of a um, student who is an alumni. Oh, I just had it up here. Nope, it didn't work. I thought it was going to work with the sound. Go down to your, you know, your sound is up. Hmm. Okay, I thought I had that working. Okay, let me try a different way. I apologize. Utah studying electrical and computer engineering. 
I did my undergrad. Hey, my name is Matthew Silver, and I'm currently a graduate student here at the University of Utah studying electrical and computer engineering. I did my undergraduate degree in electrical engineering here, and I got, also got a minor in computer science. Electrical engineering has been an immensely valuable experience for me. It is a challenging field, but it has provided me great opportunities. One of the cool things is that I'm actually also working right now. So I work up at Hill Air Force Base, and I work on um, a plane called the A-10 Warhawk. It's this, this guy, if you can see it. It's a nifty little plane. It's not the fastest, but it's kind of the most utilitarian. It helps provide close air support and search and rescue abilities for like our troops overseas or for their National Guard. Um, one of the cool things that actually fires a bullet that's this big, you know, it's pr pretty massive. But one of the cool things about my job is that I get to go out and I get to interface with pilots most, mostly, I think nearly every day. Um, and I get to help them to improve what they need and help give them the tools that they need to help others um, and save lives. Um, and that's an incredibly cool job. One cool thing about working up a hill is that they would actually take every single one of you who graduate in electrical engineering um, as soon as you graduate. All you have to do is apply. There are so many opportunities for great jobs out there. And they allow you to do great things as well. So that's kind of my experience. They're, um, I'm actually getting paid by them to go to school. And so that's kind of my awesome deal with them. And that's helped me to be able to do fun things. Like right now, I'm actually up skiing right now. And I love doing that. There, um, now school and electrical engineering is challenging. Um, it really pushes you and helps you to learn cool things. And that's what I wanted when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, my dad's electrical engineer and I already knew a lot about it, but when I got to school, that's what really stuck with me and why I kept with it. Um, here at the, the University of Utah, I've been able to work on a lot of really cool things. I've been able to see a, um, brain surgery in my ultrasound class. I was able to build an encryption engine on a chip. I've been able to do multiple audio projects, one where you could actually have your laptop act like a keyboard and up out sound to a speaker, like a piano or something. I've been able to, for my senior project, we had, using only two microphones, be able to separate two people's voices apart. So if we're speaking at the same time over each other, my system could isolate just mine and just yours, which is hard to do with only two microphones. Well, it took a long time for me to learn that stuff. Um, the biggest, most invaluable thing that I've learned up here is how to problem solve and how to approach problems and way to break it down and provide simple and elegant solutions. Um, and that's something that employers in Utah find invaluable. And it's something that has really helped me for my life and what my plans are moving forward. And so I hope as you guys try to decide what you wanna do moving forward, I hope that you guys give electrical engineering a try. It is challenging and it's tough, but it's also very rewarding. And when you graduate, you're pretty much guaranteed to have a job, which is one of the most securing things that you'll find um, um, in life. It just is really nice to know that you'll have that job and those opportunities for you. And you can really go to anything after that. So I hope you guys keep it up and I hope you guys have a fun and shake down to you. Go you. Hey, my name is Matthew Silver oh. and I'm currently a graduate. Sorry. All right. So, all right. Um, so, Luca, um, Trevin, and Cameron, do you guys have any questions particular for us to answer? That kind of concludes. Um, hopefully, you've gotten an impression of why it's important to, um, or why. <laughs> why go into electrical engineering? We hope to encourage you to do that. Um, but I understand you guys may be interested in other areas and that's fine too. Do you guys have any general questions you would like any of the panel that we have here today? So Jonathan, Joseph, Merrick or myself um, can answer. If not, I'll ask you directly. Um, Luca, like, why did you come to this session? Like, what were you hoping to get out of it? Are you able to answer? And that's fine if you guys don't want to answer. Um, Trevin, did you have any, um, like what interested you in coming to this session? Um, 
I am mainly interested in electrical engineering and about what it is and whatnot, about what you would do in it and what it takes to be one. Okay. So the nice thing is that anyone can be an electrical engineer. As um, Joseph mentioned, like his experience, he didn't have any background before he came. He just knew he did like math. Um, and so that is what one thing you have to have a desire. So if you have a desire to do it, then, you know, we help to provide, we have a really nice resources. We have tutors now, um, we have a, a nice little tutoring center um, and we offer a lot of support to help you get to learn the material in the classes so that you can get through our program. Um, so we do try to provide that. Um, so the biggest thing is that that desire, like I do wanna do this. Um, so does that, um, help you at all? <laughs> um, yeah, it does. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so Cameron, can I ask you the same question? Like what interested you in coming to this session? I've just really been interested in electrical engineering for a long time. And I just wanted to see what the uh, youth program would look like. Okay. Did this help you at all? Yeah, yeah. What other I'm like seeing, additional uh, questions or do you, I mean, I do know some other, uh, where else are you looking to go? Uh, like BYU or Utah State. Okay, yeah, and they're both good. Um, they're both good programs. You know, you're, you're, you're gonna get some differences between each one. Um, Utah State has different emphasis. Um, I did have a student come down from Utah State um, and transfer to our degree. And one thing she felt was that we really um, care about our students. And so we do offer all that support. Um, she had not really had a great interactions with her faculty up there, she said. Um, so she was really excited to come down um, and felt that that was a really big benefit of our program. Um, you know. Location wise, we offer different things like um, Matthew said he loves skiing, so he gets to, you know, utilize the outdoors right here, um, where it's a little different up in Utah State for the, the environment that's around. BYU is similar. Um, and so, you know, as far as the location and BYU's program is great too. Um, we did, we've had students also transfer from BYU. Again, that same kind of comment in that um, they felt that we really offer a more intimate um, interaction with the faculty. And so those are some things to consider when you're looking at those different programs, but all great programs, Angela, great. Yeah. If I can second, kind of second that, I, uh, I have family members that have gone to both um, BYU and uh, Utah State. Um, and one thing that's really impressed me about our program in particular in talking with with uh, my family members, um, my, my uh, we have a really good advisor program. Um, our, our academic advisors are really involved in the students' lives. My, my academic advisor knows what plants I grew in my garden last, last year. My, she knows um, what my wife is doing for her job. She, she know, she'll say hi to me in the hallway when I pass her. In contrast, uh, the people that I know that went, uh, and this was just their experience, so it's a little anecdotal, right? Um, they the they didn't meet with their graduate with their advisors until it was time for them to graduate um whereas i meet with with our advisors you know once every couple of months um and they're very helpful so there is a lot of support here at the university of utah and i i can attest to that Thank and you. also um luca asked a question it looks like joe do you you might be a good person to answer that yeah, sure. I'll just read it out so everyone hears it, but I don't have any background with computers or circuits or whatnot, but what would you recommend looking at or learning before starting a course to better help me prepare for the vigorous major and how much harder is it to go into this degree without any background, but with a desire? I think, um, like, I think the, like, to be all, in all honesty, I think the background is sort of, I mean, it's not like irrelevant, but it, I don't think someone's background coming into the program necessarily says anything about how successful they'll be in the program, but the desire is kind of that core thing that 
like whether someone has a background or doesn't, if they don't have a desire, it's going to be near impossible to get through the program. So I would say like from my experience coming in without any background in computers or circuits, I mean, the most important thing I think to prepare for like this vigorous curriculum is to get yourself used to like being organized. And I remember my, my second course in electrical engineering that was taught by Dr. First, um, her one piece of advice for all the incoming freshmen was that like once your, your schedule is going to get more and more complex. And if you don't like literally write it out and add up all the time that you expect to spend, like things are not going to get done. And I see that like every semester, like I try not to do it, not doing it. Cause I sometimes think like, Oh, it's, not going to be worth my time to like write out a schedule but anytime like I've put that on on the side like everything else starts to fall behind so I'd say that like more important like if you have the desire and you pair that with like a good ability to keep organized and make sure that everything you have to uh, get done has the time and a place and that it will get done by the deadline then that's kind of like the two I would say major enablers for doing well in the EE program. But I think if you like, for me, at least, I think if I had that first, when I first came into electrical engineering and got turned away because I had no background, I think if I had spent a little more time looking specifically at like the different areas of electrical engineering and recognizing that it's not just about circuits, but there's, a lot of physics and there's a lot of pure math. And so my recommendation on those lines would be to actually go to the University of Utah Department of Electrical Engineering's website. And I mean, this is something I always did as a lower classman and click on the research areas and just see what, uh, what the different areas actually mean. And uh, you certainly don't have to just do that at the University of Utah. Like you can look at all sorts of universities and get a bigger picture of the possibilities for uh, EE students. Well, great. Um, the other thing I would add to that is as much math as you can to prepare is helpful. So um, if you can get into, you know, pre-calculus, um, calculus is even better. Um, you know, but I think getting up to that point in the math is is much easier um, to come in with, you know, being calculus ready at least um, so that your first class of calculus is there. But if not, again, you can, you know, work your way through and we have a lot of students that work their way through from just college algebra, take trigonometry and then um, pre-calculus and then calculus. And so you can work your way through. It just takes a little longer if you're not calculus ready. So that is something else that's helpful if you can prepare is to get to the point where you are calculus ready coming in. But again, not, not something that you absolutely have to do. Um, as I said, there's lots of students that do, do come in and just start working through all that math. So, so do um, take advantage of any math um, opportunities that you have um, if you can. So that's also helpful. And then come in with that desire and um, any other skill, like Joseph said, one of those important skills is time management. Um, one of the things we do offer in our advising, as I said, we try to keep that advising um, very helpful is that we will train you um, and do some kind of work with that time management if you need it with the advisor directly. And they can help work through some of your time management skills um, and to teach you some of those if you feel like you don't necessarily have them right now. Um, so, but if you can, come in with that, that's definitely very helpful. All right, any other questions you guys have? Anything else we can address? Well, thank you for attending and hopefully um, this has helped you be interested more in our program and hopefully you're getting excited about it. Um, if not here, somewhere else, you're going into electrical engineering. Um, but do consider our program. If you have any questions, I had put in the chat um, contact information for our advisor and then also my contact information, um, which is emails. Um, so please reach out at any time and in the future also. 
um, with any questions and happy to address those. That Discord um, link is Joseph and the IEEE are monitoring that. So you can also ask that. That will go to students directly. So if you want to do that instead, that's also fine and they can direct you to the right people um, or answer your questions too.